Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you that you have granted us this time to come and worship you. We thank you how you patiently uh, reveal to us the things that are coming. That you show us the deceptions that are waiting to ensnare our souls. And you've promised that the wise would understand. Help us therefore to hearken unto your uh, entreaties. And um, to be very um, pay particular attention to the, the little things in life. Dass wir besonders aufmerksam sind bei den kleinen Dingen im Leben. That would ensure that your protecting care is over us. Dass wir sicherstellen, dass dein Schutz darüber ist. And that the light would continue to uh, open our minds. Und dass das Licht fortfahren kann, unseren Verstand zu öffnen. So please come and grace us with your presence now. So bitte komm und um, gib uns deine Gegenwart. And uh, establish us on your Bible truth. Und etabliere uns auf and we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I've uh, put notes in the live stream that they're updated from the last time we um, were looking at this topic. Also ich habe die Notizen in den Livestream gestellt, aber sie sind jetzt auch schon ein um, bisschen erneuert von dem letzten Mal, wo wir uns das angeschaut haben. And it's not so much that I've changed anything, I've just added more information uh, at, at the bottom. Und es ist nicht so sehr, dass ich es verändert habe, sondern ich habe mehr Informationen am Ende hinzugefügt. Okay, so if you go to the bottom of page 12, the head in great buildings. Also wenn wir zum Ende von Seite 12 gehen mit der Überschrift... Also Great buildings. Okay. Right, so just before we go, just a very quick reminder. Und vor dem machen wir noch eine schnelle Wiederholung. So we began this topic by um, looking at the, the kings of the East and who they represent. Und wir haben hier dieses Thema angefangen, indem wir uns diese Könige des Osten angeschaut haben und wen sie darstellen. And because it's marked at the, the sixth plague. Weil das markiert ist mit der sechsten Plage. And we know the sixth plague is the marking the point where the final test comes. Und wir wissen, die sechste Plage markiert ja den Punkt, wo der finale Test kommt. Right, and it's, it's a parallel to the sixth trumpet. Das ist auch eine Parallele mit der sechsten Posaune. Where you have uh, radical Islam being loosed. Wo man den radikalen Islam hat, der erst gelöst wird. Okay, and we understood that the kings of the East represent uh, Christ and his father returning with the weapons, or, or it's marks a point where yeah, they, they're, they're being prepared to come with the weapons of their indignation. Okay, and the weapons of his indignation is both the holy angels and Satan and his angels. And these weapons of his indignation are the holy angels also auch Satan und seine Engel. Okay, and we were looking at this, how the, the Christ, because he comes from the east. Und er kommt ja vom Osten. Right, it's uh, marking the, the east wind that he is using as his weapon of indignation. Das war, wie markiert es diesen Ostwind, den er benutzt als diese Waffe des Zorns. Okay, prefigured by Cyrus and Darius when they uh, took Babylon. Rausgeschattet durch Darius und Kyros, als sie Babylon eingenommen haben. Okay, and we also looked at the fact that Babylon was, <coughs> was going to be destroyed as Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Und wir haben ja auch gesehen, dass Babylon zerstört werden sollte, so wie Sodom und Gomorrah zerstört wurden. Okay, Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by fire and brimstone. Right. 
in Sodom und Gomorra wurde er zerstört durch Feuer und Schwefel. Okay, so we've been looking at this and understand that radical Islam is representing Satan and his angels doing this work of destruction. Also wir haben verstanden, dass eben dieser radikale Islam zu markieren Satan und seine Engel, die dieses Werk der Zerstörung machen. Okay, Satan and his angels are likened unto burning coals of fire. Und Satan und seine Engel sind verglichen mit brennenden Kohlen aus Feuer. Okay, so we we got to um, bring all these thoughts together in order to understand all these different scenarios. Also deswegen müssen wir all diese Gedanken zusammenbringen, damit wir all diese Szenarien verstehen können. Okay, and um, we also <laughs> understood that um, who they're coming to destroy is the world, the whole world. Und was wir auch verstanden haben, dass sie kommen, um eben die ganze Welt zu zerstören. Okay, the whole world is this last kingdom, Babylon. Und die ganze Welt ist dieses letzte Königreich, Babylon. And it's made up of two parts, the the threefold union, which is the king of the north. Und es ist gemacht aus zwei Teilen, aus der dreifaltigen Union, also welcher König des Nordens ist. But also the south representing the, the, the nations and all the people that have no... Um, Affiliate, no, um, let's say that they, they, are, they are of a humanistic mindset. No, they, they, they are against the, the, the fact that there is a supreme being that rules over them. Aber auch eben aus dem Süden, der was die Nationen darstellt und was eben diese humanistische Verständnis haben und die das eben nicht akzeptieren wollen, dass da eine höhere Macht ist, die um, entscheidet. Whereas the, the North claims to have a, a Christian mindset and claims to worship the God of Heaven. Wobei der Norden eben behauptet, ein christliches Verständnis zu haben und den Gott anzubieten. And we looked at this fact that this is a divided kingdom. Right? Und wir haben gesehen, dass das Ganze sozusagen ein getrenntes Königreich ist. And when Christ comes with the weapons of his indignation, they're going to punish these idol worshippers. Und wenn Christus dann kommt mit den Waffen seines Zornes, dann werden sie diese Götzendiener bestrafen. Okay. And fire and brimstone is a punishment upon those that receive the mark of the beast. Yeah. Und Feuer und Schwefel ist eine Bestrafung für diejenigen, die was dieses Markzeichen dieses Tieres haben. Okay. And those that receive uh, the mark of the beast, the north uh, in their foreheads because they are in agreement with the beast. Und der Norden wird es auf ihrer Stirn erhalten, denn sie sind in Übereinstimmung mit dem Tier. Whereas the South receive it in their hand because they get deceived or they, they do it because they are forced them to do it. Wobei der Süden es auf der Hand erhält, weil sie eben fast wie gezwungen sind, es zu akzeptieren. Okay, so that's where we were at, right? But there, uh, well, the, the last point is that we looked at the, how the destruction of Jerusalem and the destruction of Babylon both mark the same event. Und wir haben auch gesehen, wie die Zerstörung von Jerusalem, die Zerstörung von Babylon dasselbe Ereignis markiert. However, there is a reason why these two things have been the mark in the same event. Aber es gibt doch einen Grund dafür, warum diese zwei dasselbe Ereignis markieren. Okay, and, and we need to understand that. Und wir müssen das verstehen. Because Jerusalem is a symbol of those that profess to, to worship God, right? Denn Jerusalem ist ein Symbol für diejenigen, die was eben behaupten, Gott anzubeten. Okay, whereas, whereas Babylon is this false religion. Und wobei Babylon eben diese um, falsche Religion ist. Okay, so as we go through, we, we need to understand that although it's the same event taking place, it's, it's marking a punishment on these cities, it's actually two different punishments on two different mindsets. Und ähm, während dessen wir da durchgehen, müssen wir eben verstehen, dass obwohl es dasselbe Ereignis markiert, also diese Bestrafung der Welt, so ist es doch ähm, ja, wie eine Bestrafung von zwei verschiedenen Verständnissen. Okay, so this morning all, all we're going to do is go through some uh, revision on things that we already understand. Und heute Morgen werden wir ein bisschen Wiederholung machen von Dingen, die was wir bereits verstehen. And bring those thoughts together with these thoughts that we've already put in place. Und, um, wir diese dann mit dem, was wir hier 
markiert haben. Okay, and over the next few days we will come to some nice conclusions. Und in den nächsten Tagen werden wir dann zu schönen Schlussfolgerungen kommen. Okay, so let's begin on Mark chapter 13. Also wir fangen an in Markus 13. It says, And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. So the topic here is that they're speaking about great buildings, right? Also das Thema hier ist, dass sie über große Gebäude sprechen. Right. Now, in this context, they're speaking about the temple. Und in diesem Kontext sprechen sie vom Tempel. Right. And who is the temple? Und wer ist der Tempel? Sorry? We are. Oh, we is a, is a bit of a, maybe... Our body. The, 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 true, the true people of God are yes. the temple, right? Also das wahre Volk Gottes ist der Tempel. Okay, and when you look at, because it says that not one stone shall be left upon another. Und es sagt ja, kein Stein wird auf dem anderen verbleiben. What was Peter called? Was wurde Petrus genannt? A, a stone, right? Ein Stein. And Christ is the, he's the foundation, right? Und Christus ist das Fundament. Right, and ev everybody, it tells us in the Bible that everybody that's in Christ is a stone that's built upon that foundation, right? Und es sagt in der Bibel, dass ein jeder, der in Christus ist, ist eben einer von diesen Steinen, das gebaut sind auf diesem Fundament. So, when the temple is destroyed here, in, in, when it's talking about it here, it's a natural disaster that's teaching something spiritual, right? Also, wenn dieser Tempel hier zerstört wird, dann ist es eine, um, ein natürliches Desaster, was aber über etwas Geistliches spricht. So, what's it teaching us? Also, was lehrt es uns? Come, come on, guys. The natural teaches the spiritual, right? So, it's in there, right? It's talking about buildings, and we've just established what the building represents. Not one stone left upon another. What is it teaching us? Also, das Natürliche um, erklärt uns ja das Geistliche. Und hier sind große Gebäude, und es wird kein Stein auf dem anderen verbleiben. Also, was lehrt uns das? Right. It's the destruction of, of, of God's people, who he says are stones. Right? Das ist die Zerstörung von Gottes Volk. Wir haben ja gesagt, das sind diese Steine. Well, that's a different illustration, but in this, it's talking about that if if you're if you're not a stone that emits light, you're going to be destroyed, right? Also, wenn du nicht ein Stein bist. Gives off light. Also, an, wenn du nicht ein Stein bist, der was eben Licht produziert, dann wirst du eben nicht übereinander gelassen. Okay, let me give you an illustration of that. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. Wir gehen zu Matthäus 7. In fact, just hold your place there, Matthew 7. Also go to Job chapter 1, and I'll give you two witnesses. Und so far gehen wir noch zu Job Kapitel 1. And verse 19. Verse 19. It says, and behold, there came what? A great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So what happened? Was one stone upon another. Yeah, a, a wind brought the house down and they all died. Right? Not one stone was left upon another. Right? Also, ein Wind hat dieses Haus erfasst und sie 
die alle starben, also kein Stein blieb auf dem anderen. Right? Natural disaster teaching a spiritual lesson. Also eine natürliche Katastrophe lehrt uns eine etwas Geistliches. Go to Matthew 7. Wir gehen jetzt zu Matthäus 7. In Vers 24. In Vers 24. It says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken un him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. What did they build their house upon? Was haben sie das Haus gebaut? The foundation, right? Auf It's the same illustration, right? And, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. So what was wrong with the house in the book of Job? Also was war falsch mit diesem Haus in Buch Job? It wasn't built upon a correct foundation, right? Es war nicht auf einer korrekten, einem korrekten Fundament gebaut. Okay, verse 26. Vers 26. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and do oh sorry, um, yeah, every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And if you read what Sister White says, sand is man's traditions and theories. Right? And the rain descended. And the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Okay? Same illustration, right? So, Job's children were foolish virgins. Right? Because they were drinking and reveling in a time where they should have been making preparation. Right? Sie haben eben getrunken in einer Zeit, wo sie eigentlich hätten Vorbereitung machen sollen. Right, just like Belshazzar. So wie auch Belshazzar. Belshazzar was feasting and reveling, and his house fell. Not one stone was left upon another. Right. Denn auch Belshazzar, er hat Feste gefeiert, und auch sein Haus wurde zerstört. Kein Stein wurde auf dem anderen gelassen. Right. Okay. So. They are looking at, when, when they are looking at these buildings in Mark 13, how are they looking at those things? Right, from a physical aspect, right, from a, from a literal point of view, right? So Christ now wants to draw their mind to the spiritual, right? Also Christus möchte jetzt ihren Verstand zu dem Geistlichen ziehen. Okay, so let's go to this quote from 21 MR 66. Wir gehen zu dem Zitat von 21 MR 66. And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answering said unto them, Seest thou these great buildings, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Men will continue to erect expensive buildings, costing millions of money. Special attention will be called to their architectural beauty and the firmness and solidity with which they are constructed. But the Lord has instructed me that despite the unusual firmness and expensive display, these buildings will share the fate of the temple in Jerusalem. So Sister White is now going to the, the literal buildings in cities, right, that everybody looks up to and thinks, whoa, aren't they wonderful? Right? Okay, but we are to learn the same lessons from their destruction as Christ wanted the disciples to learn from the destruction in Jerusalem, right? Aber wir müssen eben dieselben Lektionen von deren Zerstörungen eben begreifen, so wie auch Christus versucht hat, das eben den Jüngern beizubringen. Right? 
Richtig. Okay. Men will continue to erect expensive buildings costing millions of money. Special attention will be called to their architectural beauty and the firmness and solidity with which they are constructed. But the Lord has instructed me that despite their unusual firmness and expensive display, these buildings will share the fate of the temple in Jerusalem. That magnificent structure fell. Which magnificent structure? The temple. Right? Angels of God were sent to do the work of destruction so that one stone was not left upon another that was not thrown down. So we already read that as angels of God in the past brought destruction when they were uh, commanded, evil angels are awaiting permission right, to do that work. Right? Also, um, we have learned that these Engel Gottes, die was eben diese Zerstörung in der Vergangenheit gemacht haben, so warten eben auch diese bösen Engel jetzt darauf, dass sie diese Erlaubnis von Gott bekommen. Okay, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be? What things? Also welche Dinge? The destruction of Jerusalem, right? Die Zerstörung von Jerusalem. And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled. I am bidden to declare the message that cities full of transgression and sinful in the extreme will be destroyed by earthquakes, by fire, by flood. All the world will be warned that there is a God who will display his authority as God. His unseen agencies will cause destruction, devastation and death. Now she used Three things there. Earthquakes, fire and flood. Right? Also sie hat drei Dinge hier benutzt. Erdbeben, Feuer und Flut. And they are literal things. Right? Sind they are natural disasters. <coughs> sind, um, natürliche Katastrophen. And each one of those things there, an earthquake, fire and flood, has a spiritual meaning. Und jedes einzelne von diesen Dingen hier, das Erdbeben, Feuer und Flut, das hat eine geistliche Bedeutung. R right? Richtig. Okay, just just go back to go back to Matthew seven. Wir gehen zurück zu Matthäus seven. Let me just show you the very same thing is being used here in the Bible. Und da zeige ich euch, dass dasselbe auch in der Bibel benutzt. Matthäus seven. Matthäus sieben und Vers siebenundzwanzig. It says, and the rain descended. And the floods came, and the winds blew. How many things? Also, wie viele Dinge? Three. Three things, right? Rain, floods, and winds. Also Regen, Wasserströme und Winde. Right? They all have a spiritual meaning. Also, sie haben alle eine geistliche Bedeutung. But they all have also a literal uh, representation, right? Also, sie haben auch eine buchstäbliche Anwendung. Okay, so do we see rains falling and Floods happening on the earth and what else? Winds blowing and, and all, all of them are causing destruction. Also wir können ja auch sehen auf der Erde, also Regen und Fluten und Winde und sie alle verursachen Zerstörung. Yes, we see these natural disasters in the world, right? Ja, also wir sehen diese natürlichen Katastrophen in der Welt. But the Lord also uses them to teach us a spiritual lesson. Aber der Herr benutzt das auch, um uns eben geistliche Lektionen zu lernen. Okay, so, um, it says, All the world will be warned that there is a God who will display his authority as God. His unseen agencies will cause destruction, devastation and death. So who does that work? Also wer tut dieses Werk? The, the destroying angels, right? Der zerstörerische Engel. Satan is the destroying angel. He's the angel of death. Und Satan ist dieser zerstörerische Engel. Er ist dieser Engel des Todes. Right? That's, his, that's these angels because the destroying angel is found in Revelation 9 and verse 11. Und das right? sind eben diese Engel, denn dieser Engel wird ja in Offenbarung 9, Vers 11 gefunden. And what happened at 9, 11? Und was geschah am 11. September oder 9? Buildings were destroyed. Not one stone was left 
upon another. Also da wurden die Gebäude zerstört und kein Stein blieb auf dem anderen. What buildings were destroyed that were not left one stone upon another? Und was für Gebäude waren das? N no, the, the north and the south towers, right? Also dieser Nord- und der Südturm. Right? Two towers, north and south. Also diese zwei Türme, Norden und Süden. So it's showing you the same punishment that came upon those buildings is teaching us something spiritual, right? Also diese selbe Bestrafung, die auf diese Gebäude kam, das lehrt uns etwas Geistliches. Okay, so um, all the accumulated riches will be as nothingness, notwithstanding the scientific care with which men safeguard buildings from destruction. One touch of the great rightful ruler will bring to nothingness the idolatrous possessions that have been laid up in a sightly and magnificent display. So, what do they call these buildings? Idolatrous possessions, right? And when you go back to Babel, <coughs> which was a tower, what did they put in the tower? Idols, right? Right, so who in the Bible punishes idol worshippers? The east wind, right? Der Ostwind. Okay, it, radical Islam. Der radikale Islam. Okay, and who f flew those planes into those towers, which was a symbol, right? Und wer hat diese Flugzeuge eben in diese Türme um, einkrachen lassen, welches ja ein Symbol war? Radical Islam, right? War der radikale Islam. They were the ones that were blamed for this disaster, right? Sie wurden beschuldigt für dieses Desaster. But they are merely a physical representation of what the Lord is doing in the spiritual world, right? Und sie sind um, diese physische Darstellung von dem, was um, sorry, what the Lord does in the spiritual world. I, yes. Also was der Herr in der geistlichen Welt macht. Because in the spiritual world Satan and his angels, right? were doing that work of destruction so that not one stone was left upon another. Right. So radical Islam is just a physical something tangible that we can see that helps us to understand okay right now Satan and his angels that we can't see are doing a work of destruction. Right? Also der radikale Islam ist sozusagen wie etwas, etwas wir sehen können, was wir greifen können, um, was uns eben zeigt, dass Satan und seine Engel eben dieses selbe Werk tun in der geistlichen Welt. Right? Against whom? Und gegen wen machen sie das? Idol worshippers. Gegen die Götzendiener. Those that receive the mark of the beast, right? Das sind diejenigen, die was dieses Malzeichen des Tieres erhalten. Everybody follow. Okay. Okay. Now go to the next quote from Life Sketches 411. It says, Now comes the word that I have declared that New York is to be swept away by a tidal wave. This I have never said. I have said as I looked at the great buildings. Which buildings? Also welche Gebäude? The great buildings. Going up there story after story. How are they going up? Story after story, right? What terrible scenes will take place when the Lord shall arise to shake terribly the earth. Who's he going to shake terribly? The earth, right? Then the words of Revelation 18 one to three will be fulfilled. Okay, so now this is marking the shaking of the heavens and the earth when you bring it line upon line, right? Also das markiert uh, die Erschütterung von Himmel und der Erde, also wenn man das Linie auf Linie zusammenbringt. Because when the heavens are shaken, who falls from heaven? Denn wenn die Himmel erschüttert werden, wer fällt vom Himmel? Right. 
who falls from heaven? Satan. The, okay, the stars, right? It is Satan, Satan, right? Satan. Okay, so, uh, but here, it's now talking about Re Revelation 18. What's Revelation 18 talking about? Destruction of, of Babylon, right? We're, we've just been talking about the destruction of Jerusalem. And now this is referring to the destruction of Babylon, right? Es spricht von der Zerstörung von Babylon. Und wir haben ja eben gelesen von der Zerstörung von Jerusalem. Jetzt spricht es in Offenbarung 18 von der Zerstörung von Babylon. It's the same destruction. This is the point I want, want to get. Both classes are being destroyed simultaneously, right? Das ist dieselbe Zerstörung. Beide Klassen werden zur gleichen Zeit zerstört. Right, so we, we have to understand why, why is the Lord paralleling the destruction of Jerusalem with the destruction of Babylon, right? Also wir müssen verstehen, warum der Herr das so macht, dass er die Zerstörung von Jerusalem parallel setzt mit der Zerstörung von Babylon. And what I want us to understand is that the destruction of Jerusalem in this context by, by this east wind Und die Zerstörung von Jerusalem in diesem Kontext, also durch diesen Ostwind I represents those that have once kept the Sabbath and have given it up, right? Stellt diejenigen da, die was einst eben diesen Sabbat gehalten haben, aber ihn dann aufgegeben haben. Okay, what do they then receive? Was erhalten sie somit? The mark of the beast, das right? Das Zeichen des Tieres. Right? So everybody that receives the mark of the beast is destroyed by the east wind. Also jeder, der das Mahlzeichen des Tieres erhält, wird zerstört durch den Ostwind. That's their, that's their physical purpose, right? Das ist um, ja, ihr physischer Zweck. Okay, so it says the whole of the 18th chapter is, of Revelation is a warning of what is coming on the earth. But I have no light in particular in regard to what is coming on New York. Only I know that one day the great buildings there will be thrown down by the turning and overturning of God's power, right? The Lord looses those evil angels to, to, so that not one stone will be left upon another, right? Also der Herr löst diese um, bösen Engel, so dass eben nicht ein Stein auf dem anderen verbleibt. Okay. So let's go to Isaiah chapter 2. Wir gehen jetzt zu Jesaja 2. Vers 10. Vers 10. So, remember we were looking at the book of Isaiah is the one that's talking about these kings of the east. Right? Wir haben uns ja angeschaut im Buch Jesaja, da spricht es von diesen Königen des Ostens. Okay. It says, Vers 10. Enter into the rock and hide thee in the dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord, which day is it? Welcher Tag ist das? The day of the Lord. Und der Tag des Herrn. Right? And the day of the Lord here is when the kings of the east come to destroy Babylon. Right? Und der Tag des Herrn, also hier. <coughs> Ist dieser Tag, wo die Könige des Osten kommen, um eben zu zerstören. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty, and upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. So what's it telling us right there? Also was sagt es uns hier? Okay, thank you. Not one stone will shall be left upon another, right? Kein einziger Stein wird auf dem anderen verbleiben. Because they're not true stones, right? They're these false ones, right? They're built upon a sandy foundation. Right? And they are lifted up and proud, right? So instead of being meek and lowly and giving worship to God, they give worship to themselves. Their, their hearts are filled with spiritual pride. So God's people are also likened unto towers, right? Und 
und Gottes Volk ist ja auch verglichen mit Türmen. Right? Richtig. Christ is the high tower. Right? Also Christus ist dieser um, hohe Turm. Okay, so we are to be like Christ. Und wir müssen ja wie Christus sein. So what must be in our hearts? Also was <coughs> muss in unserem Herzen sein? <coughs> yes, Christ <coughs> must be in our hearts, right? Also Christus muss in unserem Herzen sein. So if we have idols in our hearts, right, we're going to be destroyed, we're going to be brought down, right? Also wenn wir Götzen in unserem Herzen haben, dann werden wir zerstört, dann werden wir niedergebracht. Okay, Vers 13. Vers 13. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Basha. So it's again, now it's likened them to trees, right? Also es ist wieder verglichen mit Bäumen. And upon all the high mountains and upon all the hills that are lifted up. So mountains and hills also, right? Also um, Berge und Hügel auch. Okay, so this specifically speaking about nations, mountains, hills, trees, and um, and also it mentioned people there, right? Also das spricht hier spezifisch über um, die Nationen, also diese Berge, diese um, Hügel, diese Bäume, und das um, hat auch diese Menschen erwähnt. Okay. It says, and upon all the ships of Tarshish. Now, We read, go, let's go back there, and remind ourselves, go to Psalm 48. Let's remind ourselves who punishes the ships of Tarshish. Verse 6. It says, Fear took hold upon them there, and pain as of a woman in travail, thou breakest the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. Right? So, right here in Isaiah 2, this punishment is coming upon the ships of Tarshish. So, who's doing this punishment? And when you say 2, comes this Bestrafung and this ship of Tarshish. Tarshish. Ah, also, who makes this Bestrafung? Yeah, the, the, the east wind, right? And the east wind. Okay, and it says, there will be in pain as of a woman in travail, right? And it says that they in these veins are like a gebärende. Now, I know that, maybe, did we forget to write that on there? Um, yeah, I didn't write it on there, right? But remember, we, we read in Isaiah 13. Mm -hmm. right, just, just go back to Isaiah 13. Just see this first, yeah, and I will read it on there. We can see Isaiah 13. Verse 6. Verse 6. Same point in time, right? It says, <coughs> How ye for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. How will it come? Also, wie kommt das? As a destruction, right? Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them, and they shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth, and they shall be amazed at one another, their faces shall be as flames. So this is these kings that have assembled together against Jerusalem, right? Also das sind diese Könige, die sich zusammengetan haben, um gegen And they flee, flee away because Pain is taken upon them there as a woman in travail, right? Because the east wind is going to punish them, right? Everybody follow it. Right. So go back to Isaiah 2, verse 16. 16. And, all, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all the pleasant pictures, and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day, and the idols he shall utterly abolish. Who abolishes idols? Mm. Also, wer, um Also, wer zerstört diese Götzen? Yeah, the east wind, right? 
der Ostwind. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. That's where she took that expression from in life sketches, right? It's the day of the Lord. Also von hier hat Ellen White diesen Ausdruck genommen, von diesem Tag des Herrn. Right, and the day of the Lord is the shaking of the heavens and the earth, right? Und der Tag des Herrn ist die Sitze, also diese Erschütterung von Himmel und Erde. Okay, so, um, and then, I mean, I've got it there, it just mentions Revelation 9-11, right? We know that the, the king that's over them is Satan. Right. Abaddon Napoleon. Also das ist Abaddon oder Apollo. Okay, the, the, the angel of death, the destroying angel. Right. Der Engel des Todes und der zerstörerische Engel. Okay, so now go down to, we'll go to nine testimonies, 11, because the destroying angels in Revelation 9, 11. Und um, wir gehen jetzt zu neun Bezeugnisse. So, and it begins with this, this quote, or this, uh, this quotation from the Bible, right? From Hebrews 10 and verse 37. It says, Yet a little while, and he that shall come, will come, and will not tarry. How does the Lord come? Also, wie kommt der Herr? Okay, maybe it's maybe, maybe that was a bad question because I, I, you, you, these are the answers probably you should have given me. But I, I, I'm changing the thought process now. Mm -hmm. If you go to go to Amos, when we to Amos again, uh, no, not Amos. Go to Hosea six. Excuse me. Next Hosea six. Yes, just let's read it. Remind our minds. Hosea six. In verse 1. In verse 1. It says, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days he will revive us, and the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Now, the third day he raises you up. What day is that? Also, am dritten Tag richtet er dich wieder auf. Also, welcher Tag ist das? What's he doing there? Was tut er da? On his third day, he raises you up. What's he doing? Also, am dritten Tag richtet er dich auf. No, he's already done it. But it's at the end of it. it's the it's the blessing that comes upon his people when he comes, right? Das ist der Segen, der über sein Volk kommt, wenn er kommt. So when he comes, he has a blessing for one group and a curse for another group, right? Also, wenn er kommt, dann hat er einen Segen für eine Gruppe und einen Fluch für die andere. Christ says, "Tear down this temple." That's the death decree. And in three days I will raise it up, right? Christus hat ja gesagt, zerstört diesen Tempel, das ist das Todesdekret, und in drei Tagen will ich ihn wieder aufrichten. So when he returns, his reward is with him, right? Also wenn er wiederkehrt, dann ist sein Lohn mit ihm. Okay, so we know, we already read this, that when the holy angels, what are they doing when they come? Wir haben ja gelesen, diese heiligen Engel, was tun sie, wenn sie kommen? They are gathering the, the wheat, right? Also sie das And Satan and his angels are gathering the tares as faggots of destruction by fire, right? Also die Okay, verse 3. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. So at this point, what will you now know? Also zu diesem Punkt, was wirst du wissen? You, you'll know the Lord. You didn't know him before this point, but now you know him, right? Also du kennst nun den Herrn. Du hast ihn nicht zuvor gekannt, aber jetzt kennst du ihn. Okay. His going forth is prepared as the morning. He shall come unto us as the rain, as the ladder and former rain unto the earth. 
He comes as the former and the latter rain, right? Also er kommt wie der frühe und der späte Regen. So when he fills you with the latter rain, that marks his second coming, right? In type. Also wenn er dich füllt mit dem Spätregen, dann markiert es das zweite Kommen im Typus. We read the verse already. When those great buildings in New York come down, Revelation 18, 1-3 will be fulfilled. Und wir haben ja eben, wir haben bereits gelesen, dass wenn diese großen Gebäude in New York herunterkommen, dann ist Offenbarung 18, Vers 1-3 bis erfüllt. What is Revelation 18, 1-3? Was ist Offenbarung 18, Vers 1 bis 3? No, come on, in relation to what we're talking about, it's the outpouring of the latter rain, right? In Bezug ist es die Ausgießung des Spätregens. Right? Okay, so that, that's when he comes, he comes and fills you with his spirit, right? Also das ist, wenn er kommt, dann füllt er dich mit seinem Geist. But you can't receive that unless you've been emptied of every idol, right? Und du kannst das nicht erhalten, es sei denn, dass du bereits ähm, ja, frei bist von all diesen Götzen. So if you've not been emptied of every idol, the idol, uh, the, the ones that have been raised up to punish idol worshippers, will come and take you and burn you in the fires. Right? Also wenn du nicht frei bist von allen Götzen, dann werden diejenigen, die dazu eben bestimmt sind, diejenigen, die was noch Götzen in ihrem Herzen haben, zu sammeln, werden sie auch dich eben sammeln und du wirst eben zerstört durch Feuer. So, go back to the notes, to, to this verse from Hebrews 10. Wir gehen zurück zu den Notizen, diesem Vers von Hebräer 10. So it says, yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Right? So, just go to James chapter 5, and I'll just remind you of this point. Also, we gehen zu Jakobus Kapitel 5. Verse 7. In Vers 7. It's very clear that nobody can have this until this has been completed, right? Und es ist eben sehr deutlich, dass niemand das haben kann, es sei denn, dass das eben beendet ist. Vers 7. Vers 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. So what are you to do to the coming of the Lord? Also was musst du tun bis zur Wiederkunft des Herrn? Be patient, right? Geduldig sein. Behold, the husbandman waiteth. What's he doing? Was macht er? He's tarrying, and you have to tarry with him, right? Erwartet, und du musst mit ihm warten. He's waited for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Right? So, when you see the signs, right, this is what it's talking about, telling us that the coming of the Lord is drawing nigh, right? Also wenn du diese Zeichen siehst, sagt es uns, dann ist das Kommen des Herrn nahe. Okay, go to the next paragraph. Wir gehen zum nächsten Paragraphen. We are living in the time of the end. The fast fulfilling signs of the times declare that the coming of Christ is near at hand. So what are you to do? Also was musst du machen? What did we just read in James? Das haben wir eben in Jakobus gelesen. Establish your hearts and be patient, right? Also du musst dein Herz festigen und geduldig sein. Because these signs tell you where you are on the line and what is coming, right? Denn diese Zeichen sagen dir, wo du auf der Linie bist und was kommt. But these signs here, are they the signs? These are the, these are the first signs that Christ gave, right? Aber das sind ja diese ersten Zeichen, die Christus gegeben hat. But he says, the end is not yet, right? Und er sagt aber, das Ende ist noch nicht jetzt so, da. So, the fast fulfilling signs of the times declare that the coming Christ is near at hand, but it's not yet, right? Also diese um, sich schnell erfüllenden Zeichen sind nahe, aber es ist noch nicht jetzt. It says, the days in which we live are solemn and important. <coughs> the Spirit of God is gradually but surely being withdrawn from the earth. 
do, do we see that? Yes. Right? Do we feel it in our own experience? And erfahren wir das auch in unserer eigenen Erfahrung? Okay, this, the north and the south is going on in, in our hearts, this fight for the supremacy, right? Also diese, um, dieser Kampf ist eben in unserem Herzen zwischen dem Norden und Süden, wer eben die Herrschaft hat. Okay, so the closer we get, the more power Satan is exerting, right? Sorry? The closer we get, the more power Satan is exerting. Und umso näher wir dem kommen, umso mehr um, Kraft setzt eben Satan ein. Plagues and judgments are already falling upon the despisers of the grace of God. Do we see natural disasters increasing? Also sehen wir, wie <coughs> Katastrophen zunehmen. Right, they are physical things to teach us spiritual lessons, right? Ja, und das sind ja buchstäbliche Dinge, die uns geistliche Lektionen lernen. The calamities by land and sea, the unsettled state of society. How is society? Also, wie ist die Gesellschaft? It's unsettled, right? Sie ist unruhig. The alarms of war. Right? It says, are portentous. They, all those things, forecast approaching events of the greatest magnitude. Right? And the approaching events is this final test. Right? Diese kommenden Ereignisse, das ist der finale Test. Okay. Next paragraph. Nächster Paragraph. On one occasion, when in New York City, now she already told us about New York City, when those great buildings come down, Revelation 18, 1 to 3 will be fulfilled. Right? Und wir haben ja gelesen, dass wenn die Gebäude in New York City herunterkommen, dann ist Offenbarung 18, Vers 1 bis 3 erfüllt. Okay. And Revelation 18, 1 to 3 is a punishment and also a blessing upon the truth, right? Und Offenbarung 18, 1 bis 3 ist eine Bestrafung, aber auch ein Segen für die Wahrheit. And the punishment is upon Jerusalem, the, the false Jerusalem and Babylon, right? Und diese Bestrafung ist eben auf dem falschen Wort Jerusalem und auf Babylon. Okay, so... And it, because the, both those punishments are going to be illustrated by buildings coming down, right? Und diese beiden um, Bestrafungen sind dargestellt durch Gebäude, die herunterkommen. On one occasion when in New York City I was in the night season called upon to behold buildings rising story to, after story toward heaven. These buildings were warranted to be fireproof and they were erected to glorify their owners and builders. Higher and still higher these buildings rose, and in them the most costly material was used. Those to whom these buildings belonged were not asking themselves, how can we best glorify God? The Lord was not in their thoughts. Now, Sister White says that there are tower builders in our time, right? Und Schwester White sagt ja auch, dass da um, Turmbauer in unserer Zeit sind. And what do the tower builders do? Und was machen diese Turmbauer? Yes, but okay, they make a Sunday law. Sie machen ein Sonntagsgesetz. Right, because this is speaking about Babylon. It's about this Sunday law they make. Denn das spricht ja von Babylon, also über dieses Sonntagsgesetz. Right, so we just read about the tower builders and just go on and read. It's talking about the exaltation of Sunday. Wenn man liest über diese Turmbauer, dann spricht es eben von dieser Erhebung von, von dem Sonntag. The east wind punished these tower builders, right? Und dieser Ostwind, der bestraft sie dann. Because the east wind is raised up to punish those that receive the mark of the beast, which is Sunday worship, right? Denn der Ostwind ist dazu eben aufgerichtet, diejenigen zu bestrafen, die das Mahlzeichen des Tieres erhalten, was ja diese Sonntagsanbetung ist. Next paragraph. I thought, oh, that those who are thus investing their means could see their course as God sees it. They are piling up magnificent buildings. But how foolish in the sight of the ruler of the universe is their planning and devising. They are not studying with all the powers of heart and mind how they may glorify God. They have lost sight of this, the first duty of man. As these lofty buildings went up, the owners rejoiced with ambitious pride 
that they had money to use in gratifying self and provoking the envy of their neighbours. Much of the money that they thus invested had been obtained through exaction, through grinding down the poor. For instance, like making a virus, right, and then charging people lots of money, right, in the process. They forgot that in heaven an account of every business transaction is kept, every unjust deal, every fraudulent act is there recorded. The time is coming when in their fraud and insolence men will reach a point that the Lord will not permit them to pass and they will learn that there is a limit to the forbearance of Jehovah. And that point is when they force you to worship Sunday at pain of death. And uh, this Zeitpunkt is eben, when they then zwing the Sonntag anzubeten or that you even sterbst. Right? Right? As soon as you are forced to break God's law, that's when he acts. Also, sobald du gezwungen um, bist, gegen Gottes, äh, gegen Gottes Gesetz zu handeln, dann ist es, wenn er handelt. So all these things that we see as signs are forecasting approaching events of the greatest magnitude. Right? Also all diese Zeichen, die wir sehen, das sind eben die, was diese, diese kommenden Ereignisse eben auch zeigen. Alles, was jetzt passiert, ist sozusagen eine Vorstattung für die Ereignisse von größten Ausmaß, die noch kommen werden. Okay, so the point is that we know that this serpent sting, right, that's about to be forced upon us, is typifying this event, right? Und wir wissen eben, dass dieser Schlangenbiss, der was auf uns aufgezwungen wird, das ist das eben typifiziert. Okay, so now it's going to tell us the result of what happens when they do that, right? Und jetzt sagt es uns das Resultat von dem, wenn sie das tun. Next paragraph. Nächster Paragraph. The scene that next passed before me was an alarm of fire. Men looked at the lofty and supposedly fireproof buildings and said, they are perfectly safe, but these buildings were consumed as if made of pitch. The fire engines could do nothing to stay the destruction. The firemen were unable to operate the engines. And on 9-11 we saw that very thing happen, right? Und am 11. September haben wir genau das gesehen. Typifying this punishment upon the north and the south that will all agree to join together to do this evil. Right. Das typifiziert die Bestrafung über den Norden und Süden, die was eben zusammenkommen werden und um, übereinstimmen werden. Okay. So I am instructed when the Lord's time comes, should no change have taken place in the hearts of proud, ambitious human beings, men will find that the hand that had been strong to save will be strong to destroy. Right. So the hand is going to use God's people to give them a testimony to convict them before they cross that line, right? Also er wird Gottes Volk benutzen, um eben ihnen dieses Zeugnis zu geben, bevor sie eben diese Grenze überschreiten. Because you're going to be delivered up and this is your opportunity to give a testimony that the Lord will give you in that very hour, right? Denn du wirst ja ausgeliefert werden und das wird dann diese Möglichkeit sein für dich no earthly power can stay the hand of God. No material can be used in the erection of buildings that will preserve them from destruction when God's appointed time comes. Which time? Also welche Zeit? The appointed time. Die bestimmte Zeit. And according to Galatians 4, what are you to do before the appointed time? Und was musst du, um vor der bestimmten Zeit eben machen, gemäß Galater 4. You have to wait. Du musst warten. Christ waited for the appointed time, right? Denn auch Christus hat gewartet auf die bestimmte Zeit. And in that time, while he's waiting, he's cleansing the soul temple by studying all those types and symbols, right? Und in dieser Zeit, wo er wartete, wird eben dieser 
Seelen Tempel gereinigt um, durch das Studieren. When God's appointed time comes to send retribution on men for their disregard of his law and for their selfish ambition. So what's he punishing them for? Also für was bestraft er sie? A disregard of his law, right? Für die Missachtung seines Gesetzes. Why can he punish them for that? Warum kann er sie dafür bestrafen? They don't know his law. Sie kennen ja sein Gesetz nicht. Because you've been delivered up and you've given them a clear, powerful testimony that what they're doing is breaking God's law, right? Aber du wurdest ja bereits um, ausgeliefert und konntest eben dieses klare und deutliche Zeugnis geben, dass das, was sie machen, eben das Brechen Gottes Gesetzes ist. Now they have no cloak for their sins, right? Also nun haben sie keine um, Entschuldigung für ihre Sünde. Okay, so Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 19 is the next verse. Wir gehen zu Jesaja 13, Vers 19. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So fire and brimstone, right? Also Feuer und Schwefel. And go to Jude 1 and verse 7. Wir gehen zu Judas 1 und Vers 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the what? The cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication. What did they give themselves over to? Also, was haben sie sich hingegeben? No, it says fornication, right? So, go to Revelation 17. Um, er sagt, der Unzucht. Uh, wir gehen zu Offenbarung 14. 17. Wir gehen zu Offenbarung 17. Vers 1. It says, there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials. What does this angel have? Also, was hat dieser Engel? The seventh plague, right? Die siebte, also die sieben Plagen. No, it has the seventh plague. Es hat die siebte Plagen. Right? And talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. With whom the kings of the earth have committed what? Fornication. Right? So go back to um, Jude 1. Verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of Eternal fire, right? What is this eternal fire? Was ist dieses ewige Feuer? It's fire that burns up, that there's nothing left, right? Es ist Feuer, was um, so sehr verbrennt, dass nichts mehr übrig ist. She says those buildings were as if they were made of pitch, right? Und sie sagt, dass diese Gebäude um, waren, wie als wären sie aus Pech gemacht. What is pitch? Was ist Pech? Yes, but it, yes, it's like that. They, so they, they burn up until there's like nothing left, right? Also es verbrennt so sehr, bis nichts mehr übrig ist. Not one stone will be left upon another. It will be gone, right? So kein Stein wird auf dem anderen verbleiben. Es wird komplett weg sein. Okay, now, in 9-11, what did the buildings turn to? Und am 11. September, zu was wurden diese Gebäude? Dust. Dust, right? Zu Staub. But it's telling us here they're going to turn to ashes, right? They're going to be burned up until there's nothing left, right? Okay, and we will see in the coming days that dust and ashes, they are directly linked together in the Bible. Okay, so... Go to Genesis 19 now, which is the punishment of Sodom. We begin at 1 Mose 39, which is the bestrafung over Sodom. 19. 1 Mose 19. Right, verse 1. Verse 1. It says, There came two angels to Sodom and even. Who came to Sodom? Also, wer kam zu Sodom, nach Sodom? Two angels, right? Two angels. The two anointed ones. Die zwei These two witnesses come 
to give them a last opportunity before the destruction comes, right? Also diese zwei Zeugen kommen, um ihnen eine letzte Möglichkeit zu geben vor der Zerstörung. In Vers 24. Vers 24. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. This is a natural illustration teaching us about the punishment that comes upon those that receive the mark of the beast. Right? Also das ist eine natürliche Darstellung von dem, also von dieser Bestrafung, die über diejenigen kommt, die das das Mahlzeichen des Todes erhalten. And it says, and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. So all died, right? Also alle sind gestorben. Okay, next quote. Nächstes Zitat. Last Friday morning, just before I awoke, a very impressive scene was presented before me. I seemed to awake from sleep, but was not in my home. From the windows, I could behold a terrible conflagration. Great balls of fire were falling upon houses, and from these balls, fiery arrows were flying in every direction. It was impossible to check the fires that were kindled and many places were being destroyed. The terror of the people was indescribable. After a time I awoke and found myself at home. Next quote. Speaking about Copenhagen. I think of this city given to beer drinking, card playing, gambling, dancing and revelries. And if they hear the last message of mercy, they mock the message and the messengers as in Noah's day saying. So what did they do to the messengers? They mocked them, right? The Lord gave them a warning before he brought the punishment. Where is the promise of his coming? All things remain as they were from the beginning. When the message has fallen upon their ears of the threatened wrath of God upon the despisers of his mercy, they have mocked at the words of warning. Self-indulgence, love of pleasure and sin so engross their minds that they care for none of these things. The dwellers in Copenhagen will be awakened only too late as were the dwellers in Sodom. As they awoke in the morning of that eventful day, when the retributive judgment of God fell upon the wicked city, they thought to commence a day of godless riot, when suddenly from the sun shining in the heavens were hurled balls of fire upon the doomed capital. What did Christ do? He says it is done and cast down the censer, right? Sister White says it's the close of probation, right? But it marks the point where the seven trumpets are poured out, right? Typifying the seven plagues, right? Okay, but the trumpets were, there was two powers, two, two punishments within those trumpets, right? Und da waren ja diese um, zwei Bestrafungen in diesen Posaunen. There was the south and the east, right? Da war der Süden und der Osten. Okay, and that's what we'll come on to show. We'll look at this because we've just been dealing with the east, right? Und das werden wir uns dann auch noch anschauen, denn wir haben uns bis jetzt ja nur den Osten angeschaut. Okay, so when Christ cast down that censer, it's full of these burning coals of fire. It's him loosing Satan and his angels to bring this destructive work upon the cities, right? Also wenn Christus dieser, dieses Räucherwerk niederwirft, das ist ja voll von diesem brennenden um, Kohlen. Das ist eben wie Satan und seine Engel gelöst werden, um dieses zerstörerische Werk zu tun. Okay, in Ezekiel 1, Vers 13. Lesen wir jetzt noch Ezekiel 1 und Vers 13. It says, as for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps. So they're like burning coals of fire and they're also like lamps, right? Also sie sind wie glühende Kohlen, aber auch wie Lampen. 
It went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. Okay, how was Satan likened unto? Also mit was wird Satan verglichen? Lightning, right? Mit Blitzen. So, when we go to Revelation 8, which is the trumpet powers pouring out, right? Und jetzt gehen wir noch zur Offenbarung 8, und das sind ja diese Posaunenmächte, die was ausgegossen werden. It says, and the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven. Where is the star falling from? Also von wo fällt dieser Stern? From heaven, right? Vom Himmel. Burning as it were a lamp. Right? So who is this? Also wen stellt das da? It's Satan, yes. right? Es He's Satan. Because, and just go to Revelation 9 and verse 1. Um, können wir vielleicht die Heizung ausmachen? Wir gehen zu Offenbarung 9, Vers 1. It says, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. Right? Okay, the star falls from heaven unto the earth. Right? Also der Stern fällt vom Himmel auf die Erde. In verse 11. Vers 11. It says, they have a king over them, which is the angel... Of the bottomless pit. Right, so this, this angel here is this one that is a star falling from heaven, which is Satan, right? Also dieser Engel, das ist eben dieser Stern, also Satan, der vom Himmel fällt. So the star that's falling from heaven is this burning coal, right? Also dieser Stern, der vom Himmel fällt, das ist diese brennende Kohle. Okay. It's a, back to Revelation 8 and verse 11. Zurück zu Offenbarung 8. Um, oh, just go okay. back to verse 10, excuse me. Wir gehen zu Offenbarung 8 und Vers 10. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers. Always, and you look at every one of these trumpets, it always falls on a third part. Right? Wenn man sich um, all diese, also diese Psalmen anschaut, dann fällt es immer auf diesen dritten Teil. So if you read through the trumpets, you'll see there's, there's much more than three third parts, right? And when man even through these posaunen reads, then can man see that a third is a third, right? So there, there has to be three. Also, there gibt es mehr als drei Drittel. Right, so it's not, it's not talking about something literal. It's a symbol, right? Also das spricht nicht über etwas um, Natürliches, sondern es ist ein Symbol. Okay. So you're not to count, oh, that, well, there's a third of this punishment. They're only punishing a third of Babylon. And then the next third is going to get punished later. And then the next third will be later. And that will be all of Babylon done. Right? That, that's how the human mind looks at these things. Right? Also das ist nicht so, dass man eben so lesen kann, dass man... Sozusagen hier wird der eine, das eine Drittel zerstört von Babylon und dann das nächste Drittel und dann das nächste und am Ende sozusagen ganz Babylon zerstört, sondern das ist eben wie der menschliche Verstand das liest. A third is a symbol of Babylon being destroyed, right? And we will see this very clearly as we go through. Dieses Drittel oder dieser dritte Teil ist eben ein Symbol für Babylon, was zerstört wird. Und das werden wir noch sehen, wenn wir durchgehen werden. Okay, so... This star falls from heaven and it falls upon the third part of the rivers. And the rivers and fountains of waters, what do they represent? Also dieser Stern fällt vom Himmel und es um, fiel auf diesen, oder fällt auf diesen dritten Teil der Flüsse. Und was the, 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 the nations, dar? right? Es stellt die Nationen dar. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made Better, right? So we will come more to these trumpets uh, probably tomorrow. Right? Okay. So let's just let's let's maybe best we close at that point. So, okay, everybody follow.
so und far. auch an jeder Folge bis hierher. Okay, all we've dealt with at the moment is the east wind, who it represents and how it's going to punish both Babylon and Jerusalem, representing those that receive the mark of the beast. Right? Also was wir uns bis jetzt angeschaut haben, ist um, der Ostwind, was er eben darstellt, und wie er eben dieses Babylon und dieses falsche Jerusalem eben zerstört. Right, right. Also weil sie eben dieses Malzeichen des Tieres annehmen. Okay, okay, Let, let's leave it at that and we can close with Wir danken dir für diesen Tag. We thank you for your work this morning. Wir danken dir auch für dein Wort diesen Morgen. We thank you for this golden oil that you promised to give us morning and evening. Für dieses goldene Öl, was du verheißen hast, uns morgens und abends zu geben. Please help us to put these things in our hearts that we would not sin against you. Bitte hilf uns, dass wir diese Dinge in unser Herz tun, dass wir nicht sündigen mögen gegen dich. And we not allow the birds to come and steal these truths away. Dass wir nicht erlauben, dass die Vögel kommen und diese Wahrheiten wegstehlen. But help us as we go through this day that we would prayerfully dwell upon these things. Hilf uns, dass wenn wir durch diesen Tag gehen, dass wir um, gebetserfüllt, gebetserfüllt eben verweilen auf diesen Dingen. So that when we come back to continue these thoughts, Lord, that they would be still in our minds. So dass wir dann zurückkommen und fortfahren mit diesen Gedanken, dass es um, noch immer vorhanden ist in unserem Verstand. Please bless us this day, Lord. Bitte segne uns an diesem Tag. And remind us of the spiritual battle that we find ourselves in. Und erinnere uns an diesen geistlichen Kampf, in dem wir uns befinden. And help us to be prayerful that we would call those heavenly angels to come and waft their wings upon us and dispel the darkness. Bitte hilf uns, dass wir gebetserfüllt sind, so dass die deine Engel kommen können und ihre Flügel um, schlagen können, so dass es um, diese Dunkelheit vertreibt. And help us to be rooted and grounded in these types and symbols. Bitte hilf uns gegründet und wurzelzeitig in sein, zu sein in diesen um, Typen und Symbolen. That you may fulfill your uh, promised blessing upon us. So dass du um, deine verheißene Segen eben an uns erfüllen and kannst. For all these things we thank you in Jesus' name. Und wir danken dir für all diese Dinge. Amen. Jesu Namen.